So first, let me welcome everyone to our final session. I think that we can all say that we were moved uh, by that documentary. Milk, this is not the first time that I've gotten to see you perform, but certainly your vulnerability, the power of the cinematography, everything that came together to express not only what you experienced in terms of how the movement allowed you to express yourself, how it is that you moved everybody else through song, how you brought us together, but I think it also demonstrated the evolution of your maturity and your strength. And so we appreciate you for everything that you were able to share in that. I look forward to speaking with all of you. So without further ado, let's bring everybody up. Milk, come on up. Yuri, Miley, come and join me. So this funny accent is not from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> it is from Jamaica, and I'm from a land where uh, Bob Marley is revered wow. for everything that he did in terms of transforming people through music. I was just saying to a colleague of mine the other day that I feel as if some of the music that we're making right now, you know, a lot of it is, a, is about self-expression, but I, it doesn't feel soulful. Mm. You know, so much of what gets amplified doesn't feel soulful. It's the total opposite when I listen to you. Mm. As a matter of fact, even your voice has so much soul milk. So I want to hear from you, you know, where did this power come from? Especially in your vocal cords, like who taught you? Can I learn it too? Um, <laughs> you know, how, how did you discover that you had this talent? Uh, I think that we all have these like strong voices within us and um, I think I probably, my, my father's adopted, so I don't know a whole side of uh, my ancestry, but I'm assuming I have some powerful ancestors that, you know, made some noise um, in China and, and um, the Philippines. And so I'm, um, yeah, I think that I, I'm a very somatic, physical human being. I, I didn't realize that until this year, that I'm a very physical human being because I've kind of hidden my head you know, being a survivor of abuse, you kind of just like live, uh, like I, I realized, oh, I have all of this too. Uh, right, hello. Um, <laughs> and I think music helped to calm me down. I think the vagus nerve gets calmed when we either splash cold water on our face or when we sing. And so sing, I really gravitated towards it because it, I felt like I was home whenever I sang. Outstanding. And so tell us more about what it was like to witness uh, the women's movement and what you felt on that day when you sang I Can't Be Quiet. I can't imagine you don't have, I'm assuming that you're not a trained uh, businesswoman, not a trained entrepreneur. <laughs> I don't know if you have an MBA in your pocket, <laughs> no. but you were able to galvanize so many women around um, a movement simply through song. Can you tell us what it was like back in 2017 and how you felt on that day? Absolutely. Um, I, I remember my little brother who's seven years younger than me was always like, oh, you, you know, you just got to create something that goes viral. And viral was a word that was like really kind of daunting and for the cool kids. So I never thought that was going to be in my path. Um, I can say the one specific memory I have of the Women's March um, in 2017 was showing up to the subway station to get to the cent epicenter where everyone was gathering. And um, there's a bunch of people with signs and hats like waiting on the side of the subway. And then the, the train pulls up and it's filled to the brim with people wearing pink hats and with signs. And my full body went into full goosebump mode. And it was this magical, very electric energy in the air because we were all there for a unified cause. So I want to talk to, uh, to Yuri for a bit. Yuri, now you are an award-winning director and producer, and I can't imagine what it was like when you heard Milt's voice, but not only that, being able to capture her spirit, her soul, and her transformation. Can you tell us more about what this piece of art meant to you and how it is that you were able to do it so well? It, it was a long journey, um, but the very first phone call I had was just with Miley and Connie, and they were like, this is, this is what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think? And we just got into this like 
I don't know if, if you're friends with Connie, basically she therapizes you in every conversation. <laughs> like she really is like, she's not just like, no, how are you? <laughs> and like, I remember just crying, just talking about all of the themes that we saw in the film, just um, uh, we're enough, you know, just like anything that was self-doubt and all of the things that kind of plague us <laughs> in the mm -hmm. day to day. And so just from that very first conversation, I was like, oh, like, there is something here. We don't quite know what it's going to become, but there was a feeling and an emotion that I knew that Connie kind of like draws out of people. And that like, literally I was crying like in my living room, <laughs> just having a simple phone conversation with her who I'd never met before in my entire <laughs> life. So um, it was a challenge to, I think what's special about the film is like the interiority of Connie's kind of process and her self-awareness and her self-exploration. You know, like she just, she does a lot of deep thinking and like it's not very cinematic to try to convey deep thinking. <laughs> um, so I feel like that was a big challenge of the film is to like how can we, how can we express a genuine emotional journey mm -hmm. visually? And um, obviously the songs are a big part of that. Yeah. Um, picking the right songs and the right moments to carry us through the different scenes of the film. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, I feel like it was challenging <laughs> because of all of those things. It, it, it meant a lot to us mm -hmm. and we wanted to honor all of it. We wanted to honor Connie's honesty, <laughs> Connie's vulnerability. And you know, there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of decisions in film. And so it was, it was, I would say it was a, it was actually one of the more challenging things I've had to work on because it felt like important and like we had to respect and honor what she was kind of gifting us. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the commonality, we're all different races, um, mm -hmm. but I think there are a couple of things. Number one, we're human. And I think we were able to see the expression of your humanity, uh, Connie, in, in the film. And then we're women. And there's also commonality in our struggle in, and what we face. And so I want to learn more, Miley, about the writing. I'm a scientist, so you've got to break it down for me. As you're thinking about curating this story, and you have somebody at the epicenter of the story who has obviously experienced such um, an emotional journey, mm -hmm. uh, how did you manage to bring out so many things in a 30-minute film? I think I went through powerful. <laughs> I went through vulnerability, growth, rebirth, um, division. Right, and then we saw where a friendship was reunited and, and linked, and the stories that, that Connie was able to express and what she learned through that. So, how did you manage to take us through that cinematogra cinematog cinematographic journey in such a short space of time? First, I just want to thank Elise and everyone at Vital Voices. This is the first time that an yeah. audience has ever seen this film. Yeah. Oh, this is the first time. Yeah, thank you. All right. It was a year ago that we were here for the grand opening of That's this right. building and Connie was able to perform yes. and this room wasn't even finished yet but Elise said I want your film to I want you to come back and show this film and so we've held it so that this was the first time um, <laughs> yeah. I think I think is a couple of things. I've had the privilege of knowing Connie for a number of years since right when Quiet was going viral, we, w we met at a women's conference. Um, and I've worked really closely in her activism work and we've worked in partnerships. So I've gotten to know her as a friend and a fellow advocate. I have a deep love of music. Mm. And I think for me, what's so powerful, what I've learned after 30 years of doing advocacy work is I, I think art, but specifically music, at least for me, touches me in a place like where my deepest humanity and empathy lives. And I've seen the power that Connie's music in particular, you talked about her soul and the soul that her music has. These, She has this ability to write these anthemic mm -hmm. songs that t touch us so deeply. And then I see how that becomes kind of an equalizer for all different kinds of people to then go about bringing us together. And so I think the music is just, besides Connie, the character in the story, right? Connie's life of music and song that she lived deep inside herself that 
we experience here, but she wasn't wasn't yet ready to sort of come out with her voice when she wasn't singing. I think the songs are a huge part. We devoured content beyond um, the associate producer, Brie Arnold, my partner and I, I mean, hours and days and weeks. Yes. There's probably not one piece of content that exists that's ever been written, <laughs> sung, or we just devoured everything, things that Connie didn't even know existed. Yeah. And I think it was really this, this I, I've done feature docs and this was so hard because it was like everything in the kitchen sink. This could have been a f five hours long <laughs> and it still would have been engaging and compelling. Right. For me, the hardest part was for it to be this short and to figure out what the real heart of the story was. Mm -hmm. But on, if I'm being totally honest, we did work, but I do feel like this song, whatever your faith background is or what you believe, I believe this song came into being in a godlike divine way mm -hmm. through Connie. Yes. And it has a life of its own and a power of its own and it's palpable. And because this film is about this song, this project has had the same thing. The right people have come to it, the right resources. And I think for the most part, we kind of just had to get out of the way and the story just emerged. And the story I think that was meant to be told, Connie's story, kind of happened, honestly. We kind of shepherded it through, but it, the whole thing just feels very divine to me and, and, um, and symbolic of what the song is. Absolutely. So uh, in terms of connecting major players to effect radical change, tell me what had to come together for this film to be as successful as it is. I think probably the most important thing is that we're all women. The full production team were all women and we're mostly women of color. Beautiful. And I think first and foremost, that that's how it became this. And I think that's how the most beautiful pieces of art become the most be beautiful pieces of art. Um, I think that Connie's courage, honestly, I can't imagine what it is to open yourself up like this mm -hmm. and not just to share your story about your song that went viral and you got signed to a label, but the story behind this story, the story with AG, that it is such a vulnerable thing to talk about. And I think something as women we don't often talk about are yes. those blind spots, the rifts between us, the lateral oppression, all the ways we tear each other down. I mean, just all of it. And just the beauty of Connie's vulner vulnerability and her bravery to mm -hmm. be that vulnerable, That's right. I think is the reason that this all came together. And then a really cool company, Procter & Gamble, to be honest. Um, and Amma Harrell, who filmed Connie at the Women's March and put it on YouTube, was directing a commercial back in 2018 for the Olympics, Love Over Bias. I don't know if anyone saw it. And she, Connie did Ooh Child, a cover for that commercial, and then started a relationship with Procter & Gamble. Outstanding. They put I Belong, the song um, about AAPI hate. They really helped us put that song into the world. And then P&G Studios funded this so we could do it independently. And um, they're just an incredible partner. They walk the walk. They're, it's not just money. Like they, they really believe in what we're trying to do and everything that the film stands for. So honestly, it would not have been possible without them. Mm -hmm. Their CMO sits on the board of Vital Voices. There's lots of synergy um, in all of this, but in the same way that they support and uplift Vital Voices, they've definitely supported and uplifted this story. Well, I think you all came to the right place. Vital Voices is such an, an important organization, not only in our nation, but also in the world. And I think your story demonstrates, and how it is at Vital Voices, and at least they you know, have supported you, um, it demonstrates the impact that women can have when we stand beside and behind each other. And so I want to talk more about the vulnerability that you expressed mm -hmm. and the ownership that you took for the relationship with AG. Mm -hmm. uh, how difficult was that to call to say, I'm sorry? Did you have any type of uh, feelings about what the other side of the telephone line would be like, whether she'd be able to accept your apology? You know, was that a spiritual moment for you? That's a great question. I remember being, I, I was living in an apartment and this is during quarantine and it was, you know, after the Black Lives Matter movement was really surging and teaching us all important things. And I remember sitting in like the alleyway um, against the, my apartment building and I called her 
and I wasn't sure if she was going to receive it because uh, we're Adrian and I are very yin and yang in that like you know, when we when we start writing music, we just open everything up. And I think when the music stops, we both have very different ways of processing our emotions. Yes. So I was like, I don't know if she's gonna want to talk about this, but I have to I have to say sorry and acknowledge what I didn't see. And I I grew up as a people pleaser. I was taught to please, as I know many of us can relate to that. Um, and I remember hearing in the industry all these stories about artists getting signed and getting separated from their producers or the people who really built them. And um, I never wanted to be that person. And then when I got to that space, I hit a wall of all of my ancestral um, pains all coming at a, to a head because I wasn't supposed to be in that office in Atlantic Records theoretically yeah. but there I was and I was also 30 years old when that happened so I remember saying to the um, the CEO Julie Greenwald I was like I'm a 30 year old Chinese woman who's been told many things about making it in this industry mm -hmm. and um, I, why do you want to sign me I was like at that point like why do you I didn't even have this sense of self-worth so how can I really navigate this industry with um, a devoted love for others if I don't know how to devotedly love myself. Yes. And I think I made a decision in 2016 before my song went viral when I was watching all these politicians spew really toxic verbiage into our, our atmosphere, you know, polluting our minds and our spirits. I remember telling myself, oh, this pain and this calcification of the human soul comes from this inability to be vulnerable. So my job on this planet is to just be an open nerve ending when I can. When I feel like it is suitable, I want to be as vulnerable as possible because maybe that can combat the calcification I see in on the TV, in news articles. And Absolutely. I hope we're taping this because this is part two of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what can we do to be exceptionally supportive to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for asking. That's such a good question. I'm going to ask that to people <laughs> in, in my life. I like that. Exceptionally supportive. supportive. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, it's I'm with a team of amazing people. And so uh, I think that maybe coming, you know, just sharing about the documentary. We have social media handles called I, um, I Can't Keep Quiet Film. So it's I C. KQ Film. All right. Um, or you can follow me and then it's all linked um, and we're going to be sharing this story and the ending credit song Closer is a song I just released today and it's really a song Adrian and I wrote that song as well together nice. so it's very symbolic it. um, that the song has come out and we're showing it for the first time um, but yeah a Adrian um, AG also has a Spotify page she has amazing music so supporting her and beautiful yeah. Well, we will continue to do that. There is no way that you're going to keep quiet after this, Connie. Yeah. <laughs> so we expect to hear more from you. Uh, I want you to take us out, Erie. So tell me, it's your directorial debut, and you've done it well. Um, how else are you going to amplify this message? Tell us what else is next. And you've got a minute and a half to do okay. so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we are premiering outside of this <laughs> occasion next week in Los Angeles. So we have a festival run, basically, Beautiful. this summer. Uh, Los Angeles Asian American Film Festival, CAMFest, which is an Asian American film festival in San Francisco the following week. Uh, then we are going to Mountain Film in Telluride, where you saw Oprah um, in our film. Um, also, Bentonville. It, is that announced? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What, I can't keep track of you what's keep announced. Quiet yes. <laughs> uh, Bentonville in June. Keep track. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're, we're planning a festival run through the fall, and uh, hopefully, we'll have an official opportunity <laughs> to release and distribute the song afterwards. Excellent. All right. Well, you have our relentless support. Um, it's yeah. a powerful film. I look forward to being able to share it. So we'll share it on social media. I'm at Howard University as its executive vice president and chief operating officer. This is an open invitation to you <gasps> to come on <gasps> we campus. Would we would that. love to replicate that. this. Oh. Our students would love to hear your story. Oh. Yeah. That 
being said, thank you to everyone for attending our final session. Elise, are you coming up to give closing I remarks? I am. Fantastic. I am, yes. First off, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for, you. for bringing this beautiful, beautiful film here. Mm -hmm. But more than that, thank you for the partnership, really. Thank you, Miley. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, Connie. Thank really. you for thank you. thank you, wonderful board member. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for coming today. And I hope you're planning to join us tomorrow. But before tomorrow, upstairs, we have the incredible Aileen Kamakian from Lebanon. She's normally with Chef uh, Jose Andre. <laughs> but tonight she's with us. So she's upstairs. She has overseen and cooked some amazing things for us. We also have women vinters with us. We have a DJ. We have an incredible, spectacular roof deck. Let me tell you, the first time I went up there, I'm like, we are at the seat of power <laughs> right where we belong. So you go up there, you feel the power and enjoy each other. Um, we look forward to to being with you. So thank you again. Thank you.